I used to work at DDBJ, and actually I did PhD here, and also as worked as an assistant professor. Then I moved to Osaka, and now I'm working on PDB, and looking for a new job. So let's start. I think everyone knows that protein folds and unfolds depending on the solvent condition, like temperature or pH or denaturant concentration. And I would like to argue that this kind of folding transition may occur in the sequence space. And sequence space is a space where each point represents an amino acid sequence, and neighboring points represent two sequences that are significantly similar. And if you look at the sequence space, you will see that natural proteins are clustered, like islands, in the C region. And each island is uh, characterized by a specific, unique native fold, like this. And between the islands, there is the C region, where polypeptide sequences cannot fold. So these C region represent unfoldable proteins, and these islands represent foldable proteins. And if you look at the structural order along the sequence space, you will see this kind of order disorder transition. This is my expectation. expectation. And I would like to see that we using a, a mathematical model, this transition may occur in nature. So the objective is to construct a model that can study the folding transition in the sequence space and using the model characterize the transition. And here's the data I use. Since uh, I'm concentrating on one particular island, I use a specific family called SH3 domain family. And I, using this kind of multiple sequence alignment, I extract some statistical quantities and also using the representative native structure of this protein, uh, I include structural information in the model. And in the PFAM database, you will find this uh, profile hidden Markov model. And based on that model structure, I construct the model and incorporate the structural information in terms of contacts in the space. So based on the hidden Markov model, I construct this kind of lattice structure. It's a quasi-one-dimensional structure. But it also includes non-bonded interactions based on structural contacts. We, with this model, you can align any sequences. Uh, for example, one example of infinitely many amino acid sequences, here's one sequence. And one of many possible alignments with this model and of this sequence can be represented as this. So here are core regions, which consist the main conserved region of the protein. And between bonded pair of core sites, you find uh, insertions. There may be many insertions at each insert site. So in this example, there are three residues inserted here and otherwise there, there are core regions aligned with the sequence. Maybe there can be a deletion in the core site. So here's the model. I introduced the energy function, which consists of short-range interaction between neighboring aligned pairs, bonded pairs, and long-range interactions based on the contacts. And this is a chemical potential introduced to perturb the system. So the intrinsic energy consists of only these short-range interactions and long-range interactions. And I assume that the probability of observing one particular alignment is given by this Boltzmann distribution. With this factor defined by this, this is a partition function, which sums over all possible alignments with all possible sequences. So this cannot be computed explicitly so I result to Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, by the way, this logarithm of this is called uh, grand potential. Since the, the length of alignment can vary, this is a grand canonical ensemble. So here's the algorithm for uh, Monte Carlo simulation. For core sites, you define only 
substitutions between uh, different residues. And for insert site, there can be substitutions or insertions or deletions like this. And except uh, mutations, including substitutions, insertions, and deletions are accepted according to uh, ordinary metropolis criteria. And in order to carry out the simulation, we have to first determine the parameters. And those parameters are determined so that the simulated uh, pair densities for bonded pairs and non-bonded pairs are equal to the observed densities, uh, observed in the multiple sequence element given in the PFAM database. And by adjusting these uh, densities for bonded pairs and non-bonded pairs, it is automatically satisfied that uh, for each site, site den single site densities uh, for simulated ones and observed ones are equal. And this can be carried out by minimizing one uh, free energy function. And this is the grand potential def defined earlier, and this is the average energy of observed multiple sequence alignment. And this, can, uh, this is done by running Monte Carlo simulation iteratively. And after determining the parameters, I can just run the Monte Carlo simulations like this. Well, this is a kind of virtual temperature jump experiment. Uh, and this is energy, and this is the Monte Carlo steps. And you see the fluctuation of energies like this. And if you see the alignment at each point, you will see these kind of alignments. You can see that the length of alignments can differ very greatly. And for high energy sequences, you will find, uh, uh, you will not find any similarity with the natural sequence. But for low energy sequences, you will find uh, sequences very similar to naturally occurring uh, proteins with E values, they are almost zero. And this is uh, calculated with uh, HMM search program. So in order to confirm the existence of the transition, I cal first calculated the specific heat, which is the variance of the energy. Uh, if you vary the temperature like this and calculate this specific heat, you will find this peak. So this means there is some transition at this point, which is uh, temperature is uh, 1.0179. And at this point, if you run the simulation, you will find this nice two-state transition uh, between high energy state and low energy state, and very few sequences in between. So this confirms the existence of the transition in the sequence space. And, but we, don't, we still don't know that low energy structure, uh, sequences are really similar to the natural sequences. So I plotted the... Uh, similarity to the natural sequences. Uh, in this example, I sampled 10,000 sequences at each temperature. And for this database of 10,000 sequences, I run uh, HM profile search against the SH3 domain family. And, and this plus the fraction of the sequences that show a significant hits to the naturally occurring protein. So, you see the nice two-state transition curve here. And at high temperature, you will find very few natural-like sequences. But at low temperature, you will find mostly naturally natural-like proteins. And to characterize the transition state, transition, transition state ensemble, I calculated this divergence for each site, uh, for each temperature. So this is the core site index, and this is the temperature. If you plot this divergence, you will see that some uh, sites uh, diverge very widely, uh, widely, but some sites, mostly unconserved sites, stay blue. Blue means uh, low divergence. So this actually, uh, the divergence at high temperature represents the conserv uh, cons conservation of each site, like this. And uh, to characterize the transition of each site, I take the derivative of this divergence, and which is this. And this, this is actually a kind of covariance between 
the residues at each site and the total energy. So if residues uh, distribution changes a lot and the energy changes a lot, this becomes a large value. And if, as if you see this, you will find these peaks here. But most of these peaks are above the transition temperature of the overall system. And some show high peaks, but some uh, sites show lower peaks. And these, the height of these peaks corresponds to uh, these values, actually. They correlate very well. Almost uh, correlation coefficient is almost one. And if you plot that uh, transition temperature for each site, like this, taking uh, the peak temperature, we will find this curve. And in summary, this shows less conserved sites has high transition temperature, and more conserved, better conserved sites have lower transition temperature. So this means as you decrease the temperature, uh, less conserved regions forms their district, establishes this, uh, their distribution first. Then that proceeds to bet more increasingly better conserved regions. And more conserved regions like this and this are formed in the later stage. And, but the range of this temperature is very narrow. So the difference is very subtle. In order to uh, check the significance of each site more directly, I changed the chemical potential. First, I tried alanine scan, in which I impose the chemical potential for alanine residue to a very large value, so that at this site, only alanine residue is allowed. And other sites uh, uh, can, can adapt any residues that are consistent so that their distributions are consistent with this perturbation. In this, uh, in this experiment, I, ch I changed uh, this potential for each site in turn, and you will find that some better conserved sites show uh, very low hit rate. Hit, rate mean, hit ratio means uh, the number, the fraction of uh, sequences that are significantly similar to the natural sequences. So for these sites, uh, the conservation is very important. But for less conserved sites, this perturbation doesn't affect much. Conversely, I can uh, enforce the most conserved dominant residue at each site. So I force uh, the most cons uh, dominant residue at each site and let other residues adapt freely. In this case, uh, and I simulate at high temperature. So without this uh, perturbation, the sequences are mostly unnatural. Uh, the default heat ratio is 0 0.79, so it's very low. But by enforcing these residues here, like this, we'll find a lot of significant amount of sequences are quite similar to the natural sequences. So to summarize this, uh, the results, uh, one uh, scenario emerges about a sequence pattern formation or folding in the sequence space. First, less conserved sites are kind of established. But these sites are unconserved, so even at the lower temperature, they are quite disordered. But that triggers progressive development of sequence patterns uh, for better conserved residues, and well-conserved sites are established in later stage. And then well-conserved sites reinforces the pattern formation of the entire sequence. So it attracts other residues in certain distribution. And this is uh, uh, reinforced by the long-range interactions because most conserved residues have many contacts with other residues. And then overall pattern is established. So here's the summary. 
I show the cooperative transition can be possible. It's possible in the sequence space. And this means, in practical sense, Chris boundary may be de defined for each family. That means we can clearly, we should be able to clearly distinguish family members and non-family members. And more philosophically, this uh, shows a duality between external environment like temperature or pH and internal information, that is the sequence. So they behave in a similar manner in the sense that I, the change in either can trigger the folding transition. And I also show that enforcing or suppressing a few well-conserved residues can enhance or diminish sequence pattern formation. And this has some evolutionary significance in that some, if some selective pressure can act on a few selected residues, selective residues, then the, the evolution of entire sequence can be greatly accelerated. And if you consider conventional sequence models, uh, which can be represented by the profile hidden Markov models, uh, you will find this structure, which is, in essence, one-dimensional system. And they cannot incorporate long-range interactions. So this means no cooperative or phase transition can occur with this model. And this means uh, the family boundary is always fuzzy. And this in turn means many possible false positives and false negatives may be found using this kind of models. So I suspect this situation may have already biased our understanding of protein families. So in fact, I also tried this uh, simulation using other PFAM models. And in some cases, uh, very different uh, results were obtained in that no phase transition occurred. And I looked in, into the details and found that some families are very badly aligned. And so you, using this kind of one-dimensional model, we may have to be very careful in curating the alignments. And that may uh, be found in many other examples. So in the future, we'll see some major corrections in family definitions. And that's all. Oh, I don't, I need to acknowledge these people. And I would like to say that these three people are also uh, all, uh, used to work at DDBJ. And these people are in my lab. And these people uh, gave some critical uh, advices. Thank you.